Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. I don't know about you, but I think information overload is probably one of the greatest challenges in this day and age that we face uh, uh, as traders. So if you've got too much information coming at you, what are you going to tend to do as a trader? Probably n- not much. You're probably going to be frozen. We call it analysis paralysis. So you've only got six key vehicles to focus on. That's going to make your life a lot simpler and more focused make you a better trader, I think, uh, if you're having any challenges with information overload. Uh, we're also going to talk about an unusual approach I use on a, on a conventional indicator, uh, the, the Larry Williams indicator called percent %R, or percent range indicator. The percent %R um, is, a, is an indicator that a lot of people use as an overbought, oversold tool, but I actually like to use it um, to find major trends. So you're going to see me focus on that as well here today. Um, let's start with acceleration bands. You know, if you're an options trader, which I'm assuming a lot of you are that are in tonight, or at least you're looking to get into it, uh, that, you know, if you're trading options compared to, um, uh, say, just buying a stock or buying a, the for, a foreign exchange uh, itself, you know, typically what are you dealing with when you buy an option? You're typically dealing with uh, you're buying a right to, um, you know, either buy the, buy the underlying uh, FX, pair in this case if you're buying a call or to sell that pair uh, if you're buying a put. Well, the, the idea is that, you know, clearly you're going to get a lot more leverage potential with the options, but you have to also know not just timing of getting the trend right, but you also want to make sure that you make the right type of choice in the option that you choose because you're going to find that uh, if you, say, get too aggressive by a far out of the money option and then it maybe moves up a little bit, how many of you had that experience where you bought an option, you were right about the direction of the underlying security, and you still lose money on the option over a period of a few weeks. You know, that you think, why does that happen? Well, there's a couple of reasons it happens. One is that either you might have bought too expensive of an option, that the, the volatility, as it's called, was too high, or that too much time premium was eroding, and that trend just wasn't moving fast enough. So really what this is about for me when I'm trading options is it's about speed. You know, speed is a sexy word. Obviously, everybody loves the idea of speed in their cars and in their, uh, in their uh, velocity of their money moving in their favor. But, of course, speed, you know, you have to be able to manage your risk as well. You know, if, you, if you're driving at, uh, you know, 150 miles an hour uh, in congested traffic, you're going to have a lot more risk of an accident. So you've got to know when the uh, lane clears up for you, if you will, um, uh, to drive at the maximum allowable speed. Why don't we put it that way to be safe? But basically to uh, say that, you know, at that point you're in a lower risk situation where you can speed up versus, um, you know, a situation where you're maybe trying too hard and, and uh, forcing a trade where the, where the opportunity to speed up is just not there. i um, never used that analogy before, but it actually works pretty well. Um, you know, and all of us can relate to that uh, in, our, in our driving. Um, you know, the idea is that, you know, there's, there's sweet spots where the lane opens up and there's, and there's periods where you want to just be patient and wait uh, for, your, for your lane to open up. So like a lot of you, I started trading with moving averages. And I noticed that the best stocks, uh, and I say stocks, this is where I started back in 1990. I was trading your, your stocks like your Cisco's and your Microsoft's and Home Depot's, which at the time, believe it or not, were big growth stocks. Now, of course, I think two of those three just announced layoff plans this last week. And so, uh, you know, it's a little different environment for those big cap companies right now in the stock market. But again, one more reason to consider investigating foreign exchange as, a, as certainly a, 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 a nice alternative for, to consider for part of your portfolio. Well, I noticed that the best ones that I would trade, and then I'd jump off, because you've all heard the phrase, Bulls and bears get rich, but hogs get slaughtered. Right? That, that if it's the it's the, it's when you get hoggy and piggy about it that you seem to get yourself in trouble by either taking too big of a of a position or by hanging around too long, not taking part of your profits off the table. All these key elements that 
we've got to be in a position of saying, yes, okay, we're going to um, be sensible, take some money off the table, you do that, and then you see it as you've gotten off to the sidelines and locked in your property, you see it racing on ahead without you and going, ah, I wish I'd been a little more a little more piggy about that one. Well, no, you, you don't want to do that, but at the same time you want to have a way to get back on board those best trends. And it's the same way with the FX pairs that I see, that you know, they're going to have periods at which they really trend, and they're going to have periods where they chop around. You know, that, that nothing is, it's, it's everything in, in life is a cycle, you know. <laughs> everything goes through its up phases, its down phases, its flat phases. Um, you know, that you have to, it's, it's volatile periods and it's non-volatile periods. You have to put yourself in a position just to know when is that sweet spot really there and when is it time to go, um, go looking elsewhere or just keep that cash parked until you get another good opportunity. So this is, this is one of the beautiful things about it is that when you learn to trade this way, you learn that you can be patient. You learn that using leverage intelligently, you don't have to be in the market every day. You don't have to be um, hyperactive. You can really pick your spots. And, in fact, you want to pick your spots because I would submit to you that probably the greatest challenge that you face in staying in the game long term is when your confidence gets dashed. Not just when your portfolio might take a hit if you, if you made the wrong kind of move on a, on a series of trades, but also when you knew you should have done something different or you just lost confidence in general in your methodology. So it's really important to me and to all of my subscribers of Big Trends that we really keep uh, our, our confidence high, and that means we focus a lot more on the quality of our trades rather than the quantity of our trades. You know, we, we don't want to make one trade a year. We want to make enough trades to make it meaningful to say, why are we following these markets each and every day? But the bottom line is that when those trends start to run, we can really see um, the the power of leverage work for us. At the same time, of course, leverage is a double-edged sword, and you have to manage that risk. When it's not working, move on and uh, get back to the sidelines, and then and and keep your uh, the not just your portfolio intact overall, manage your drawdowns, but also keep your confidence intact. That your belief in what you're doing is still strong, and that you know that even with a losing trade, we have to take a quick stop out. That shouldn't uh, throw you off of your plan to keep following. Uh, things through. It's like the same. It's the analogy of the the house in Vegas. You know that they want you to stay at the table as long as possible, and keep on playing because the longer you play a game that you have a negative expectation for in Vegas, uh, the more the the house is going to benefit. You know we want to do the same thing in reverse for you as traders. At Big Trends, we seek to teach you how to have a positive edge, and then take small steady bets consistently. Just like they do in Vegas, they want steady bets. They don't want somebody to uh, to t put down all of their uh, all their money on one hand and get lucky and get up and walk out. Uh, they may not let you walk out, but no. Uh, the the bottom line is that you know that's that's really if you're playing if you're playing a game like in Vegas that you that they had the edge you and you had to bet you'd want to bet one time, hope you got lucky and move on. Well, we're we're trying to take the luck part out of the equation and say, look, it's a process, it's a probability game, and we have to put the probabilities in our favor. So acceleration bands is one of the ways I do that, getting back on these best trends, uh, having a way back into them, and saying, okay, look, uh, I looked at a lot of adaptive bands, uh, bands that adapt to price action. You know, John Bollinger was one of the innovators here with his Bollinger bands. And you'll see on a number of my examples where we'll be able to compare acceleration bands against what Bollinger bands look like. Um, I found that in trading ranges, Bollinger Bands are really good because they're very, they're very reactive. They're very adaptive to what's happening uh, on a very short-term basis. I find that once trends get started, the Bollinger Bands will race too fast to catch up to that trend because they're so reactive. And, and I developed this technique called acceleration bands, which are typically going to keep you with the trend uh, a, a lot longer than any other form of band I've seen. Like a Bollinger Band, an acceleration band should encompass about 95% of the price action. That, in techie terms, is two standard deviations around typically a 20-day moving average. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.